everyone and welcome to the first Bangladesh Eastern Himalayan Naturomics Forum. As part of our annual Eastern Himalayan Naturomics Forum focused on the theme of ecology's economy, the conversation would be incomplete in this new paradigm of growth without talking about Eastern Himalayan regions, rich natural capital resources, which actually offers us an opportunity in transitioning it into a new sustainable model of growth. So this panel today will talk about the largest mangrove delta of the world, the Sundarbans mangrove forest in the ecosystem. And like we, while we all have known about the rich biodiversity it holds and that it is home to a wide variety of species, it is also worth mentioning that how the mangrove ecosystem is also an ecosystem that supports and provides um, sustainable livelihood opportunities to millions of people in the vicinity of the site. Of about 5.1 million people live in the forest range villages in Sundarbans in the forest range areas. So yes, it is this Sundarbans, it is the treasure ecosystem to the forest range communities for agricultural activities, for fishermen, for the honey gatherers, and many, many more lives and livelihoods. So as we move ahead now, I firstly sincerely thank all our panelists for joining in to take forward this conversation today. Uh, I would like to briefly introduce uh, each one of you all. And so we have with us Professor Muhammad Firoz Zaman, Professor at the Department of Geology at the University of Dhaka. He's currently associated to series of wildlife and biodiversity projects in Bangladesh, like ecology and behavior of Cape Langur, Gangetic Dolphin, and other wildlife, some other wildlife monitoring at Padma River Inside. We have with us Muhammad Zahidul Kabir, who is the conservator of forests Bangladesh Forest Department, Government of Bangladesh. He is a graduate in forestry from the Khulna University and master's in forestry from Chittagong University. He has a keen interest for wildlife and biodiversity conservation and is currently leading the capacity building training for forest officials at the Sheikh Kamal Wildlife Center, Ghazipur. Then we have with us Professor Abdullah Harun Chaudhry, who is a professor at the Department of Environmental Science at the Khulna University in Bangladesh. He has been conducting several research works on topics like ecology and environment, biodiversity and natural resources management, mangrove ecosystems, industrial pollutions, and sustainable uses of different wetlands and aquatic ecosystems since 1993. We then have Professor Muhammad Niyamul Nasir, who is currently the professor and chairman to the Department of Geology in Fisheries uh, in the uh, University of Dhaka, Bangladesh and who started his career as a scientist at the Bangladesh Fisheries Research Institute in its coastal research facilities in the early 90s. Professor Nasar, Nasir has extensive research background on major aquatic systems of Bangladesh from aquaculture, ponds to river systems, coastal wetlands, and the sea. And we have with us Muhammad Noor Alum Sheikh, who is a freelancer journalist, environmental activist from Bangladesh, who, is, who has worked for Bangladesh Beta Radio in the past and is currently associated to several volunteer and several social organizations in Bangladesh. I welcome all of you. And once again, uh, may I now request uh, Dr. Zabed Hussain, who is the professor Department of Botany and who has been teaching plant ecology at the University of Dhaka, Bangladesh to moderate the Bangladesh. session, mangrove ecosystem, habitats, yeah. communities, and livelihoods. Over to you, Professor Hussain. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Karishma, and very good evening to all of you. I, for the first, uh, at the beginning, I want to thank uh, Balibara Foundation uh, for arranging, arranging this uh, uh, forum, uh, which is uh, Bangladesh Eastern Himalayan Natural Nomics Forum, under the 8th Eastern Himalayan Natural Nomics Forum meeting 2020. And the forum meeting uh, with the topic of today's discussion is mangrove ecosystem, habitats, communications, uh, communities, and livelihoods. So forests are important natural resources for all lives on earth, for all countries, including Bangladesh. Particularly in Bangladesh, forest plays significant role in national GDP, as well as in the employment of the people that contributes 
almost 2% of the whole population of the country in addition to the provisioning services these forests play important ro important role in regulatory and cultural services and the importance of such values are immense among the forest sundarbon is very significant for this region particularly this forest with the area of about 10000 square kilometer spread over both bangladesh and india and these are the largest single block mangrove forest in the world these waste wetland forests are highly productive ecosystems in our with rich biodiversity and typical ecological structure and function therefore unesco declared four protected areas of sundarbon of bangladesh as unesco world heritage sites however forest this forest is now showing some signs of degradation due to both natural and human induced pressures so we should take appropriate actions to conserve this ecosystem so today we all are here to discuss about the various issues on this ecosystem too so that so that we can take and government take proper actions to conserve this ecosystem so in this discussion first of all i would like to invite dr mohammad niyamul nasir professor and chairman of the department of geology university of dhaka to uh, to start the discussion so professor professor nasir you know that sundarbon is very rich in biodiversity particularly in the aquatic resources and upon these resources there are there are thousands of people depend for their livelihood so it means that both people and natural resources are interdependent so how do you, how do you define this inter uh, relationships or interdependent dependency of each of these components of the natural ecosystem professor nasir Uh, thank you, Professor Javed Hussain. Uh, first of all, uh, I like to thank the the Bali Para Foundation to arrange such a nice uh, meeting, and then all of you to invite me in this session. Um, I would like to come to the very basic of this Sundarbans. We are so uh, proud of this forest, as well as we are so lucky to having this Sundarbans. which is the largest mangrove forest in earth we all know about it and that's why it is uh, one of the unesco world heritage site and uh, this mangrove forest is the sundarban as a whole with bangladesh and india is the 6% of the total mangrove area of the world and uh, of this sundarban 60% belongs to bangladesh and that is roughly the 4% of our land area so you can imagine how precious it is in terms of a highly populated country as well as a small country like bangladesh uh, to have a forest like this if we go back to the governance we can see that the british uh, government of british india they declared this in 1875 and 76 uh, 300 years back they declared it as a reserve forest and then in consequently the several protected areas uh, become evident nowadays if we think about the sundarban and its wetland as well as its swamp area because it's uh, totally it's a it's a saline uh, evident swamp area many uh, interesting aquatic flora and fauna are there and that is why the people those who live along the edge of the forest 
they are very much interested to harvest or to depend on is on uh, depend on these natural resources. In one statistics, I found that there are about three million people live along the edge of the Sundarban. There's no people live inside the Sundarban. That's a very good part because I visited Indian Sundarban where the people also entered into the Sundarban. But in Bangladesh, we are very happy that people live outside the edge of this thing. The forest department is successfully managed not to allow any people inside the Sundarban. And where the four districts like Bagarhat, Kunla, and Satkira are uh, involved uh, with first four forest ranges uh, for administering the whole Sundarban in Bangladesh area. The thing is, because I talked about it, because you can see that there is a very big challenge because it is, it is spread along the coastal area along and, and it is sharing with India. There is, a, there is a space where the people can invade Sundarban. People can do their agriculture. People are looking for uh, fish. People are looking for honey. People are looking for other resources, especially crabs and shrimps from the Sundarban. And there is the conflict. If we think about, uh, if we think about this uh, Sundarban uh, as the place for the tiger, and we see those people who are, who are inv invading the Sundarban, uh, they are affected by, or they are, you know, hunted by the tiger. So there's a population, they are a distressed woman population there, that they lost their husband through, uh, for the, for, they lost their husband due to the tiger attack and other problem, other hazardous things too. So if we think about sensitively that the people and Sundarban, people are uh, along the age of the, uh, of the Sundarban, usually uh, they invade for their benefit without, uh, in most of the time, without uh, the permission from the forest department. If it goes, to the forest department, it could be better management. So uh, we are we are thinking that, uh, or we have to make a, uh, a way how to make these people to get uh, to get involved or to follow the rules from the forest department. Other part, other part is as I'm talking about the aquatic resources. And there is a huge, the Sundarban is very important for uh, aquatic nursing ground, aquatic animal nursing ground, as well as the spawning ground. So that is uh, managed by the forest department. And it would be uh, very, it will be nice that if this management uh, will be, is, you know, enhanced, for the betterment of the natural resources beside the forest. So that is my very basic understanding of the Sundarban and the livelihood and people dependency on the ecosystem. So vulnerability is there where we invent the uh, Sundarban, where we try to en encourage uh, the uh, resources. Rules. If we are understanding the benefit of the Sundarban, then it could be okay. It could be okay, and the sooner one can live forever. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Nirmala uh, sir. Now I want to come to Professor uh, Muhammad Kuri Jaman. So Professor Jaman, you know that uh, uh, if we want to say something about sooner one, we must say something about tiger. So what is the present state of uh, tiger population or uh, tiger uh, in the in the sooner one? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> you know that the Sundarban is very uh, biggest uh, mangrove forest in the world, and uh, we are very proud about these things. And 
and this is very important uh, uh, mangrove habitats and, and, and representing the tigers, right? Tiger is the uh, actually the flagship species, and, and this is the <clears throat> this is one of the most important indicator species, flagship species of the country, and also for the for the Sundarbans. Without tiger, we cannot think about the Sundarbans because uh, they are the main uh, uh, protector of the Sundarbans. Without tiger, it is difficult to manage to preserve this mangrove forest. And uh, uh, tiger is the, you know, the, this, this is the, in the ecosystem, if you think about the ecology and ecosystems, tiger is the uh, uh, top positions, right? And uh, uh, top positions is also uh, uh, play important role uh, for maintaining the uh, food chain. And this is very important because, it, and it, it is also the uh, important predators because the predator and prey, have, there is a relationships, you know. And uh, if uh, predator population decreases, then prey population will be increased. Okay? And uh, if prey population increases, they will destroy the, uh, because the most of the prey species of the tiger depend on the grasses and foliage. And uh, if population increase of that organisms, uh, uh, grasslands and also the vegetation will decrease, right? Uh, so ecosystem, total ecosystem will be disrupted. And uh, tiger, you know, the, uh, the Bangladesh is very popular because of the tiger. And uh, world people know about this tiger. And that's why our cricket team, we say the tiger, tiger team. So uh, it has, uh, I think is the big, big significance uh, in our ecological point of view, and uh, and for our country, and yeah, and if you if you uh, uh, think about the mangrove forest of Sundarbans, mangrove forest is playing very important role protecting the, this area uh, from the natural disasters like cyclones that we have every every year's uh, attack uh, and, and go through the Bangladesh, and uh, Sundarban is actually the uh, helping us, protecting us huh, as, a, as a wall. Uh, so that's why Sundarban is very important. And uh, for, uh, you know, to preserve uh, and to conserve for us and for also for the India, I think in the Indian, Indian part. Uh, although Indian part is small, Bangladesh is the larger part covering in this area. Uh, but uh, both countries should have, uh, uh, should have the important roles to protect this. And uh, if you think about the biodiversity of the Sundarban mangrove forest, you know more than 200 species of birds actually occurring in this area. Is the very small uh, area comparing to the other places like country, uh, whole country of the country, uh, Bangladesh. But more than 200 species out of the 650 uh, species. Uh, uh, and then do you know that there are some important uh, endangered species occurring in this area like uh, crocodile, saltwater crocodiles, and uh, uh, terrapins, like, uh, you know, the, there is a very critically endangered turtle species is occurring in that area, uh, Batagar Baska. And uh, in this area, we have uh, large populations of deers and large population of, uh, of freshwater, uh, you know, dolphin. And dolphin populations is actually main population is there. And uh, you know the king cobra uh, among the reptiles, hey, most of the population is in the Sundarbans. And also the pig, wild pig populations is larger in the Sundarbans area. And large populations of the rhesus macaques is uh, also occurring uh, in Sundarbans area. We have in other places uh, rhesus macaques, but most of the populations is in Sundarbans. So if you think about the diversity of the wildlife and uh, 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 along with the fish diversities and invertebrate populations, uh, uh, it's covering a very big diversity, big diversity of the country. So it carry very important role and very significance uh, for the total biodiversity, diversity, biodiversity of the country. And uh, that's why it's, I think it's very important. And this place, you know, this ecosystem is estuary in ecosystems. And estuary in ecosystems is very important ecosystems because, uh, because uh, these kinds of ecos uh, habitats uh, uh, 
habitats consist of large number of populations, large number of species, diverse species, both aquatics and, and also the terrestrial animals. So I think it's very important and we have to think, both of the country, we have to think together how can we make better for the conservation of this uh, Sundarbans as well as for the mangrove wildlife of the country. Thank you very much. So now uh, we want to come to we want to come to Professor Abdullah Harun Chaudhary. Uh, so Professor Chaudhary, you know that uh, uh, Bezos is actually the uh, foundation for diversity. Okay, because uh, plant vegetation uh, they are the uh, pri uh, primary producer, and uh, they actually harbor uh, and they actually they are the habitat for all other lives. So, uh, would you please tell uh, what are the environment related or climate related uh, threats uh, to this uh, vegetation? Or do you have any data that this vegetation composition or this vegetation, vegetation structure is being changed due to environmental factors? Uh, thank you, Possibly. Professor Javed. Uh, first of all, uh, good evening, everyone. And thanks to Balipara Foundation for inviting me to discuss uh, in this session. Uh, you just uh, rightly mentioned that actually vegetation is the main, actually uh, plants is the main actually of the forest. So uh, we are actually doing the study in the different uh, patches of the Sundarban. I think you know that patches. So we have the, some permanent sampling spots in the uh, western part and also there is a four divisions of the forest, uh, Sundarban forest as well as we just would like to based on the Salinity we divided in three division. Three divisions is a high saline zone, is a uh, meso saline zone, and uh, is a low saline zone areas. Based on that, we can say actually there are some species, uh, their structure, population are being changed due to the adaptation with the uh, soil quality, soil salinity, as well as also water salinity of that areas. And this is the part of the succession of the any ecosystem and ecological areas. But uh, it is noticeable that there is some species are declining very rapidly. Someone is increasing very rapidly. Just I would like to mention that there are some major species of the Sundarban, you know, that, that is called the Sundari hereditary forms. Their population is uh, declining in a very specific areas. Why I'm coming the later. And also is a Gylocarpus uh, granatum and Gylocarpus macansis. One is called is a dundul, another called is a poshu. These three plants, their population is declining. On the other hand, there is a high saline tolerant plants like is a goran, which is called is a syrup decandra, as well as exocaria, agaloka, that is called is a gawa. These are the major species, as well as another timber type plants that is called is a there is. Trifolia lata or also other climbers locally name is a Kalia lata or Gila lata. Their population are actually increasing uh, of that areas because is a uh, some low saline areas now due to increasing of salinity, their uh, soil become more saline as well as also their uh, vegetation sibling is uh, population is decreasing. When we started. Uh, at this Sundarban is a long time. Just I mentioned here the data based on the three different five years difference based on the is 2012, 2015, and 2018. So based on that, we observed that this uh, population is of three uh, um, uh, uh, changing uh, highly, increasing. Suppose in western part of the Sundarbans earlier where the more Sundaris are there, now their population is declining. On the other hand, Goran is increasing of that area because the uh, situation of that area is actually suitable for increasing the population of Goran. On the other hand, we find three things. What is this? The seedlings, uh, seeds which are actually floating in the water. Uh, we try to observe that most of the embryo of the seeds are actually not in a good conditions. So I just would like to mention that is a uh, more before 2010 we observed in uh, out of the uh, in a areas actually seedling in one square meter areas. When we uh, started the quadrant, we find that 10 to 14 seedlings are there. 
before uh, 2005 we observed that 12 to 19 seedlings now it is decreasing two to three poor number of seedlings on the other hand we observed that is a fruit seeds is a more than 70 percent seeds basically sunduri and poshu and other seeds their embryo is actually decomposed condition on the other hand is a gava their uh, seeds are very good condition goran they are also same thing and you know that some vegetative growths are also growing for goran and others so in that case we find this a we also collected some seeds of low cell tolerant plants and we try to go uh, freeze up in the saline, different saline condition, we observed that actually high saline is creating the problem to decompose the embryo of the Shunduri and also Goran and Poshu. And in addition to there are some small vegetations like is a tiger fern and other, due to increasing of salinity basically in different parts like is Heron Point area, some patches of the Heron Point, some patches of the Kotkas. Earlier, what is the, these are the high saline zone and moderate saline zone areas, but now due to change of the different type of environmental conditions, these areas, high saline zone areas also salinity is increasing. Low saline zone also converted into a high saline zones and very low saline zone basically stand part of the uh, uh, Sundarmans like is a Sharan Kola and also uh, these areas, they are converting into a moderate saline zone areas. And sequentially, the vegetation is also being changed. And in addition to this, with this vegetation, there is other types of the biodiversity lies on depending on other uh, animals population, these are also being changed. And one thing is that not only the vegetation in that areas, is a, you know that there is a one plant which is called locally named is a bhola, just like a discuss group of plants. We are finding earlier it was a uh, very common plant in the low saline zone, but in there is a very specific spores of like is a corum jol and also other points, except that in the high saline zone it is very rare plants now. So this I just mentioned there is a three major species. It is many years ago it was noticed that their population is decreasing and some areas they are declining. Not only that, due to absence of the revegetation, some areas is totally is vegetationless. Earlier, I think more than 10 years ago, where we have seen the very dense population and small seedlings are there. But very recently, I can share my last year, uh, last year, November 2019, my experience is that there is no vegetation. So we collect the soil samples and water samples. We have seen not only the salinity, soil quality and water quality also different type of chemicals components. These are also being changed. And very alarming is that there are some very specific spores. We find that the oil spill, oil content is also increasing. There is a different sources that is maybe I will uh, discuss with the later. But this is the alarming, which is not actually suitable for the growth of seedlings and seed uh, survival of the germination of seed embryos and others. So as a result, total scenario of these areas are being changed. And in addition to this vegetation, there's other population like birds, you can say deer and reptiles and also frogs, they are also being changed. Earlier, there are some places we noticed some high saline tolerant frogs, which were not available in earlier of that areas. There are some uh, natural uh, calamity also responsible for that. There is many other causes. I think you have some second question. I just would like to mention those in the second points when the environmental uh, degradation causes which are actually creating this problem in those areas. Uh, now we want to come to uh, Mr. MD Noor Alam Sheikh. Uh, we know that you are in a very fantastic uh, position uh, being, uh, being an environmental uh, activist uh, as well as a social worker and uh, you work uh, with the grassroots level people uh, very closely and you also know uh, the economic condition of the people as well as the mental setup of the rural people. So uh, we know that uh, Shundurban is very rich in uh, natural resources and there are so many ecosystem services and uh, as well as uh, uh, local people are also dependent on them. Uh, on them. So uh, do you think these uh, natural resources or services are being equally distributed 
uh, among the people or local people uh, whether they are getting uh, uh, these uh, rights to use these uh, resources what is your evaluation sundarbon is the largest forest in the bangladesh the sundarbon is also called mangrove forest or badabon it is an important natural ecosystem for us our sundarbon is located in the southwest coastal region of bangladesh and a small part of west bengal of india near the bay of bengal in bangladesh the sundarbon cover an extensive area of satkira kulla and baghar district the goleshwar goleshwar river marks the coast east corner the raimangal river the west corner bay of bengal the south corner and a large area extends north or into bangladesh the total area of sundarbon in bangladesh is and india is 10000 square kilometers with 60% in bangladesh and 40% in india the area in bangladesh is 6017 square kilometer approximately 70% of the sundarbon's area is land and 30% is water the sundarbon uh, covers about 4% of the total area of bangladesh and contains roughly 40% of the total forest of our country the sundarbon sundarbans has 334 species of plants 42 species of mammals 35 species of reptiles 291 species of fish and 315 species of birds totally of uh, sundarbans uh, sundari kewa goran bain poshur katla kewa gelpata polisha etc animals of sundarbans tiger chitra deer wild boar monkey crocodile python tortoise dolphin otter fish cat different species of bird extinct species bengal tiger crocodile dolphin tries various species of fish and birds the number of uh, people dependent on the sundarbans is 2.5 billion among them are fisher men bawali mawali tourist traders etc among the uh, people dependent on the sundarbans 50000 people are involved in fishing challenges uh, for the sundarbans the unplanned industrialization beside poshu river and sundarbans the biggest mangrove forest in the world and the old heritage site illegal wildlife crossing illegal fishing in the poshu river river erosion open sand coal oil fertilizer carrying vessel in the poshu river unplanned and continuously river drainer are used all through the year and climate sells bad effect thank you very much uh, thank you very much uh, uh, mr nurul alam shek uh, for uh, very nice information you okay. gave and now we want to come to uh, mr uh, md jahidul kolbi and you are in the regulatory position uh, so you have you uh, have ability to something for the uh, for uh, this uh, forest i think so from this discussion we can to learn that there are threats uh, to the biodiversity as well as the natural uh, processes and the structure of this forest but we also know that the government also uh, has taken some program to restore this ecosystem so do you think that uh, these programs are uh, sufficient to uh, improve the situation or how do you think that uh, these programs are helping uh, to improve the situation thank you uh, professor jabed uh, and thank you the bolipara foundation for organizing this sort of program uh, so that we could know something about the mangrove of bangladesh so as uh, you know that uh, half of the world mangrove has been uh, destroyed over the last 50 years uh, in the world uh, and that is very alarming 
though uh, in Bangladesh, our Sundarbon do not lose any land uh, 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 from the forest area. Uh, that 6,000 square kilometer, uh, around 6,000 uh, square kilometer area, uh, it was in 1862 when the forest department took over the charges uh, to manage this forest. And still now it is 6,000, uh, almost 6,000 uh, square kilometer area uh, we are managing in 2020. So as per the uh, question concern, that is the degradation, uh, the causes of degradation already discussed uh, by our esteemed colleague uh, from different agencies. Uh, I could uh, mention that uh, Professor Harun, uh, he rightly mentioned that increasing the salinity is the um, uh, number one challenges uh, and number one causes for the degradation of uh, forest in Bangladesh part. Uh, another, uh, as we have uh, uh, observed, that siltation and raised forest for restricted tidal water in some areas uh, like uh, Chakpai Range, uh, Sharankola, and in between uh, that area, uh, that is, uh, forest floor has been raised and very limited the tidal uh, salinity water uh, uh, flooded that area, and uh, that degradation happened in some area due to this uh, siltation and raising of forest floor. Soil erosion is mentioned by Nuralam Sheikh, uh, but it is very important that some area is eroded very rapidly uh, in the uh, near the Bay of Bengal, uh, and uh, deposition is also occurring uh, in the eastern part of the Sundarbon very rapidly. Over harvesting of the fish resources, uh, uh, fish and crab resources, also it is very, uh, it is also a limiting factor uh, for biodiversity conservation, and also huge industrial pressure, as like other development countries uh, have, and the Bangladeshis have no uh, uh, exception, as we are a development country, so we have a development pressure in the coastal area, including Sundarban area, so it might have some uh, limitation and causes of degradation of the forest floor uh, as well, I think. Regarding all these uh, degradation factors, uh, uh, the main uh, degradation factor is the increasing salinity uh, that I have mentioned by the Professor Harun. Uh, what can I do? What can we do? What can the government can do? Uh, only except dialogue with the India. Because uh, withdrawal of water uh, with the Ganga barriers, uh, the Paraka barriers, uh, is the main limiting factor, uh, and uh, the you see the uh, upper uh, freshwater flow in the upper side uh, is the limiting factor as the Ganga have uh, reduced their uh, um, uh, you see water, uh, and also in some areas uh, uh, water is lifted for uh, agriculture and other par industrial purposes in the area. So ultimately, the freshwater flow has been reduced. Uh, greatly, and this is the main concern of salinity increase, increase, uh, intrusion, increasing salinity intrusion in the Sundarbon and different uh, salinity region of the Sundarbon, and that is the main factor of vegetation degradation in the Sundarbon. That we do not have anything to do, uh, only dialogue with the Indian government to increase the fresh water flow to Sundarbon to save the Sundarbon. The lifeline is the water, and that is coming from the our uh, uh, neighboring country, India. So we have, uh, 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 you see, continued dialogue for, uh, for government uh, is trying to continue dialogue uh, to increase the fresh water flow in Shundarban. And <clears throat> you see the over harvesting uh, in this uh, causes, we have a lot to do uh, the forest department are, and, uh, and the management of the forest department. So involving the community, uh, the Bangladesh Forest Department uh, uh, established community uh, um, uh, co-management committee in 2010. And four co-management committees there and are more than 320 members are there. All of the members are the user, resource user group of Sundarbon, the fisherman, uh, uh, honey collector, uh, and other uh, professional body tour, tour operators. Those, uh, they are the member uh, of the committee. And the government established some little endowment fund in that area. Um, and also uh, our plan already government uh, 
uh, have uh, uh, policy policy level uh, approval uh, we got from the planning commission uh, that uh, 250 uh, you see crore of bdt will be allotted for the community people of that area uh, that already uh, professor uh, um, nasser mentioned that 3 million people uh, living in the periphery of the Shandarbon. So these 3 million people is very important uh, for uh, the uh, Shandarbon, for the uh, protection of Shandarbon, as well as uh, for the protection of the resources of the Shandarbon. So um, we are uh, taking various initiatives, uh, how we can uh, you see different people from, uh, dependent or reduce dependency of the people uh, on the resources. So various program already taken and uh, in future as the government have allotted to fund 250 crore uh, BDT uh, and uh, many program is coming uh, for the rehabilitation of those people and you know the government has declared 52 percent of the Shundarbon as a sanctuary that is prohibition and harvesting is prohibited in this uh, uh, entrance and harvesting is prohibited in that area uh, more than um, uh, these uh, uh, some July, August has been declared as the ban period for all sorts of fishing and as well as uh, the canals uh, less than 25 feet um, width uh, has uh, banned for fishing all time and 18, uh, you see the um, um, 18 canals that is very important for the um, uh, uh, reproduction of the fish uh, and uh, the fish breeding ground uh, that uh, canal also has been declared banned for fishing so various other program government has de declared uh, for the uh, restoration of the habitat uh, and the, with the involving the local community uh, i think that is uh, playing important role uh, and that will continue in future thank you very much i'll come back again yeah thank you very much uh, uh, mr uh... Kobir. So I am coming to Professor uh, Nirmal uh, Nasser uh, once again. So Professor Nasser, uh, would you tell uh, us uh, about the gaps uh, uh, in case of uh, uh, the methods that are used to uh, evaluate uh, ecosystem services and the services that uh, have already been uh, evaluated, uh, particularly for the uh, mangrove uh, ecosystem? Uh, the cap is a uh, cap comes from different way. If we think about the conflicts between the Sundarban goers as well as the shrimp or the crab farmers along the uh, along the ages, there there is a cap. So we have the ecological services that we have fish and shrimp inside the Shundarbon, but we are extracting more or we are collecting the brood or the mother from the Shundarbon to color, to get the, 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 the juveniles or the, to get the little, little um, uh, post larvae to culture in the ages along the Shundarbon. So this is the uh, we have our uh, governance uh, to save the Sundarban around the uh, around these ages. Another point is if we think about the protection of Sundarban inside it was done by the forest department it was nicely managed by them whereas along the age it is the ECA by what is called ecological critical area that was managed by the Department of Environment. So the uh, thing is, there should be some way to, uh, of, uh, I, I would say, to communication. So the whole management thing should be done. I, I as for aquatic system, I, I see there's a gap of the fisheries management outside the uh, outside this. Uh, I, I, I already mentioned that the shrimp and crab farming, we are doing good on that thing. But the problem is, it's the cost of the brood or is the cost of the Sundarban to supply broods and others. So 
my finally i would like to say that we should develop a way of uh, alternative uh, way to uh, alternatives to to support this livelihood of the people or the fishermen that is that will match the lifestyle of the and their uh, and their culture practices uh, without disturbing the sundarban that will be my point and it can be possible actually we don't try it actually we don't go for the other culture brood fish we don't go for the alternative crabs outside the sundarban we are just going to the sundarban and getting it from there and then we are we are trying to uh, you know culture it in in our pond outside the sundarban thank you thank you very much uh, professor nasir uh and now uh, i want to know uh, from uh, professor mohammad khuru jaman so professor jaman uh, uh, do you think that uh, the existing uh, laws and policies are sufficient enough uh, to protect uh, wildlife or what do you think what things uh, further we should do to protect this uh, wildlife thank you very much uh, professor jaber and uh, also the balipara foundations uh, to invite me to say something about the wildlife of sundarbans and how can we manage this wildlife and how can we manage the peoples for and uh, the uh, uh, livelihood of the people living around the sundarbans <clears throat> uh, okay uh, in the second phase of my talk i actually yeah, highlight how can we protect our wildlife in sundarban areas you know that sundarban is a very large area uh, comparing to the other uh, habitat of the country uh, particularly as a the mangrove forest <clears throat> and uh, and we already yeah, i already talk about the uh, diversity of wildlife and other wild, other natural resources and also uh, one of our uh, uh, participant uh, nur alam uh, he brief briefly described uh, how much wildlife and other uh, biodiversity is consisting in this area and uh, you know the uh, this wild if we think about the conservation and protection of this wildlife first of all uh i think they we have to stop the illegal poaching poaching is the main problems in the in the sundarban areas i think and uh, because the the poachers uh, regularly killing uh, the tiger tigers as well as the spotted deer sometimes they they kill the tiger but mostly killing the and, and capturing the uh, wild boars spotted deer and this since is spotted deer is the important predators of tigers so tigers are affecting uh, not directly but indirectly so uh, we have to stop the poaching and, uh, and then bangladesh forest department and also the indian government collaboratively can work with this and i i know the you, know, you also know that there are several projects is going on uh to protect the wildlife and to reduce the poaching yeah, wildlife for illegal poaching in that area and uh, some people are actually uh, depends on the wildlife resources and also the other resources of the sundarbans if we uh, think about uh, them how can we manage them and how can we change their livelihood uh, uh, and then Uh, i think is the pressure on the sundarbans will be reduced uh, uh, th this can be the helpful for the protection of the wildlife in that area and also the uh, another thing is uh, you know there are some natural problems this uh, increasing the salinity that also disturbing and, uh, and also creating problem for the diversity and for the mangrove vegetations and man mangrove vegetation is sometimes is uh, they have uh, many problems for disease and also uh, also uh, drying and also destroying siltation also uh, uh, making the problems and uh, this uh, salinity uh, reductions if you want to do then maybe both country 
collaboratively we have to work together and uh, because the, there are many rivers is coming from india and uh, go through the uh, sundarbans and if the upper side upper part of the uh, rivers uh, have uh, my water flow is stopped then uh, salinity is, is a natural phenomena you know the salinity will be increased in sundarbans this is very uh, very natural things so uh, both scientists and the politicians uh, should discuss together it needs a dialogue big dialogue not the small dialogue i think the big dialogue to how can we manage the uh, sundarbans and how can we protect the sundarbans because sundarbans I, 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 at first i i told already the sundarbans is very important for the protection not only for the bangladesh also the indian part from the natural calamities so if we reduce the salinity then uh, uh, sundarban vegetation will be increased if vegetation will increase then wildlife diversity will be increased and if you stop the illegal poaching of the sundarbans then wildlife and other biodiversity and natural resources will be increased so ecosystem will be healthy i think and uh, we have to think uh, all the aspects together because the, the one aspect is related with the other aspects one aspect is influencing with other aspects that's the important thing I think. thank you very much thank you very much okay. professor uh, jaman uh, so now i, I want to ask uh, one question to uh, professor abdul haran choudhury so choudhury you have uh, long experience uh, uh, in working with the uh, shundarban ecosystem and uh, you have uh, you have seen what are the states actually would you please tell us what are the states uh, that are uh, for the overall biodiversity of sundarban and what are the mitigation options that we can take to uh, protect this uh, uh, ecosystem from the environmental uh, degradation okay thank you professor javed actually the uh, total plant population as well as biodiversity is decreasing day by day due to macro and microclimatic changes such as increasing cyclone cedar isla and different uh, storm and tidal surges and very recently happened there is amphan and phoni like this thing so in relation to that different climatic parameters which are being changing i just would like to mention here from 2010 to 2018 just uh, mention that air temperature of the sundarban in an around area in 2010 it was a 14.5 to 13 uh, 35 Uh, degree celsius range was there uh, uh, before 2010 but is the last 2018 we have recorded it was uh, 16.2 to 38 degree celsius in uh, inside the sundarban and in uh, around the sundarban areas not only that in relation to water temperature also is increasing here uh, before 2010 it was 17 to 28.5 in last 2018 we have recorded 21 to 32.5 uh, degrees celsius i am not going to the middle years and others rainfall is decreasing before 2010 it was a uh, 311 uh, mm but in the last uh, 2018 it was 270 uh, uh, 270 to say 270 mm was there humidity is gradually increasing Uh, in and around the sundarbans water salinity it was a before 2010 3 to 18.8 ppt but is a 2018 it was a 5.2 to 24.5 and soil salinity before 2010 it was a 2 to 14 ppt but 2018 it was a 3 to 15.2 that means you could understood how the climatic parameters are being changed and for your kind information that actually the when salinity is increasing automatically temperature is being increased because saline water and soil both have the more capacity to absorb the temperature from the sunlight comparing to the fresh water and for your other information that some water quality also being changed like that is a by biological oxygen demand chemical oxygen demand as like as that also you think that there is some uh, oil content is increasing gradually uh, uh, silica uh, calcium magnesium those are being increasing partially in and around the sundarbans now you can question what is the problem of the water quality because you know that is a tidal forest 
most of the times is a more than uh, uh, 6 hours it is going to under water in that time actually this contaminated water are coming to the forest floor and which is absorbing by the plants and as well as we have we think that this may be some physiological changes is happening there and based on that also other diversity is being changed and already i mentioned that in relation to water soil quality is being changes yeah? even we are finding that is a also oil content in also in the is the soil second thing is salinity and other is a water is increasing and one rightly mentioned that is a land erosion land erosion is the major problem in the different sides of the sundarbans why these are happening i just would like to say that siltation of the river beds it is causes of the erosion on the other hand erosion is the causes for siltation why i am just to explain it just uh, permit me for one minute just uh, i would like to mention that is a before 2012 we mm -hmm. have seen that yearly sediment erosion rate was is a river bed sedimentation rate was 6.5 cm now it is enhancing more than uh, 19.4 to more than uh, uh, 20 23 uh, cm per year why the causes causes is that when salinity is increasing then soil bonding soil bond uh, soil are actually losing their bonds when they are losing their bonds when during the high tides they are actually easily eroded when the soil losing their bonds and if they eroded then siltation is raising just for your kind information i think that more than uh, 20 years back we had visited some areas of the sundarbans just i am giving the present example just uh, in front of the hiron point areas we can easily move that area during the low tide also by using the very big size country boat now during the low tide you never go there Yeah, it is small country boat. Even the boats when they enter in the Hiron points is tourist place area. They are waiting when high tides are coming. These are happening in the most of the creeks and canals of the Sundarbans. And another thing is that due to salinity increasing and changing of the soil quality, poor natural regeneration of seedling are increasing. This is the one of the threats for that areas. And another threat is that when people are taking the is a permission for collecting the uh, non timber forest products uh, but in that time they would like to do some illegal actually felling of the plants quail roots and other and that was totally unplanned and uh, um, unhealthy condition of that areas uh, sometimes forest department would like to control it but due to the lack of the awareness i think that it's very difficult to control of that area people and another uh, threats is that using poisonous uh, material in the canals for fishing some people they are discharging the poisons in the canals to take the more fishes and especially the kobir uh, mr kobir mentioned that there are some restricted canal that is sanctuary that is restricted canal breeding ground is spawning ground of the different fishes actually the fisher this illegal fishing who are doing they are targeting all of this that type of the actually those canals where the breeding ground and also spawning ground. another problem is that oil spills you know that the these are happening from the different source of the our uh, basins and also source of sometimes the oil spill is happening for the sink of the sheep etc that is the major problem of that areas now inside the sundarbans because the oil spill is creating the problem for the nematophores and rooting of the actually vegetations on the other hand is a industrialization on the periphery that is uh, sometimes is a planned and planned way these are happening due to the industrialization air quality also being changed in the sundarban areas because during the actually winter and dry season wind flowing is from north to south direction as a result according to the dispersion model of the cgis so this is going to be more than 22 25 km inside the sundarbans so i think that it is very uh, important uh, so, so air pollution is another state you think okay. yeah air pollution yeah. is also one of the important problem is yeah. uh, arising yeah. now just is a yeah. uh, trend of the changing of the water quality it is very important now because uh, yeah. this forest is actually depending on completely the water so i think that uh, this is the important very and in addition to 
this is the upstream water flow decreasing of the upstream yeah. water flow so this is the all are the threats for uh, these areas and finally i just would like to conclude that which people are actually going to the sundarbans they are actually working as a day laborer which are investing money to collect the resources actually for their greediness for their uh, more collection of the resources uh, this type of illegal activities are being happening there uh, okay so finally uh, i want to ask uh, mr md jahidul kobi uh, uh, the final question uh, is to you so what is the best uh, future economic rationale for management uh, uh, for, for mangrove ecosystem rehabilitation and management what would you like to say about this thank you very much i was listening very uh, carefully with all the observations and comments from a different panelist mm, uh, uh, and first of all i'll uh, would like to address uh, some comments uh, especially regarding the tiger number uh, i need to clarify uh, you all uh, regarding the tiger number as uh, mr fir zaman uh, mentioned mm, uh, i think he mentioned Uh, the both the part of the sundarban that is indian part and bangladesh part all together there are 200 tigers uh, almost 200 tigers uh, uh, as per last census uh, in india and bangladesh but in bangladesh part uh, in the last census happened in 2018 uh, and as per that census estimation uh, we have uh, 114 uh, tigers uh, in bangladesh part uh, but we we do and uh, you see the carrying capacity assessment uh, in very limited scale uh, not very huge sampling uh, data uh, and we could find that uh, the present situation of sundarban as per the present situation of sundarban sundarban can support uh, you see the an in an average 164 tiger in bangladesh part uh, that is the uh, tiger situation in our part of sundarban uh and you see the um, uh, as uh, mentioned by the nuralum sheik uh, uh, uh he uh, uh, raised uh, some complaint uh, i do agree and acknowledge his uh, emotions uh, yes uh, some problems are still there uh, especially the poaching increases during this covid period uh, worldwide not in bangladesh but worldwide the covid in covid situation many people uh, become you see the jobless and uh, they become much more uh, dependent on the resources especially the natural resources and the situation he mentioned in the last you see idul adha that is nothing different from other scenario in the world and as well as in bangladesh uh, 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 regarding uh, another thing he mentioned that is the dolphin sanctuary dct dolphin conservation team uh, you see that uh, Uh, always if you want to do some community work uh, always there will be some people they will lead the group they will lead the community and that people are also involved in some illegal activities maybe illegal activities so these people are also visible with the government agency this is the scenario but a common scenario not only in bangladesh in other asian countries that those people you will find in the face in the uh, spot they will uh, be always leading everything approaching they are leader of poaching they are legal leader of illegal fishing they are leader of other illegal things so our target people is the basically the fisherman and he will always go to inside sundarban you will you will never see him that is basic scenario you will never see him he is the always busy he will not give you time even on hour will go inside the sundarban fishing doing everything so uh, it is very challenging uh, uh, job to get the actual fisherman actual research dependent people in touch but we know this situation very well uh, that's why we are working uh, we have established a community based management in 2010 and already awareness build up activities already happen but we could not afford the sustainable alternative income uh, to the community people it is still not sustainable it is uh, working in the uh, for the timing of the project period 
so our plan is to make these people uh, the alternative uh, in generation and another thing is that you see the already a lot of industrialization happening that is the government policy that industry will come uh, though uh, the, the, the forest department is doing the strategic environment assessment uh, the work is going on and after the prepare, uh, report come of the strategic environment assessment we will get some uh, you, you see the indication that some donation where uh, the industry will be and where the restoration program and community will live uh, and all those things will be there in the uh, uh, strategic environment plan and as per the strategic environmental plan we'll design our uh, you see uh, the uh, uh, alternative income generation activities it may be that this uh, some of the industry will be uh, create the job opportunities for the community people and the community people those are uh, dependent on the uh, uh, resources uh, they will be less dependent and th that may be the uh, opportunity for us uh, some of the industry that is not harmful to sundarban uh, again another thing is that uh, government uh, uh, already i have mentioned that government under uh, take uh, 2050 crore bdt uh, for the community uh, uh, residing and the 10 kilometer uh, periphery of the sundarban so this will uh, give them a hands up endowment fund and from that endowment fund they will uh, get the uh, sustainably support uh, their uh, you see the uh, basic five support they will get with this uh, package of money uh, to the community people uh, will go so all these activities that government uh, taking uh, finally i would like to you have mentioned the future future economic uh, rationale that will contribute both conservation and the community this is a very critical issue because you see the sundarban bangladesh it is not like other mangrove forest in the world we have a 70 almost more than 70 kilometer uh, length wood sundarban uh, from the sea to land part this, is a, this length is almost uh, more than 70 kilometers. In other countries, you will find a very thin, narrow belt of mangrove. And their pressure, their community involvement, and our community involvement model will be different. You see, after um, uh, 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 different uh, natural calamity, Thailand and Indonesia, they have launched a community-based ecological mangrove restoration program. They have planted trees with the help of the community and they give some benefit to the community from that restoration program. But in our case, the resource dependency, if you want to reduce, we have that separate model. You see, we have some program with the restoration program that is, a, 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 you see, assisted natural regeneration program. We have undertaken, uh, first of all, we'll do the survey and some research is also needed uh, and we'll do the na uh, assisted natural regeneration in the blank area, uh, denuded area of the Sundarban. But uh, there is no scope to involve the local community like the CB, uh, CBEM EMR program of Thailand and Indonesia. That is, they have a very good model, but it will not totally, uh, fully work in our case. But what we are doing, uh, we're doing uh, um, uh, mangrove uh, ecosystem rehabilitation program under this program, uh, the community uh, will uh, do their fishing. You see that in our part of Sundarban, I have to mention that the harvesting of the forest or tea has been banned since 1991 and still it is continuing. Harvesting of tree uh, resources banned except the Golpata uh, and Hali collection, it is uh, there. Only Golpata is there but very limited scale. So. Uh, so the fisherman is the main target uh, people and we are doing a various program for the alternative income generation and also restoring the people to some limited uh, area uh, and uh, we have uh, smart patrolling over there, uh, law enforcement uh, situation has been strengthened. So like other country, it is not possible in Bangladesh uh, to, to um, for the restoration program uh, in Sundarban habitat restoration program. In another thing uh, I could uh, I should mention uh, here uh, that uh, you see the um, we have dolphin sanctuary and we have uh, um, uh, the three, uh, three not three we have six dolphin sanctuary and the total area four thousand four hundred ninety seven 
hectare of the area. And uh, in some other area, we are thinking to declare the saltwater crocodile uh, sanctuary also. So these all this sanctuary will contribute to the uh, uh, restoration. And already our crocodile population and dolphin situation as per the last century has increased a lot. Uh, a significant amount. So tiger population also uh, in earlier uh, 2015 census and 2018 census, it reflects the almost 8% increase of the tiger population. So all this uh, data shows that the situation is improving in the government. And if we uh, can implement uh, the upcoming program with the community people, we can employ, uh, we'll develop a modality over there and we can implement this program, I think, uh, within a uh, couple of years, within coming years, uh, the, our uh, situation will be uh, improving gradually. In addition to that, we have a program to, uh, you see the uh, 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 construction of fresh water pond and uh, renovation of fresh water pond. So under the Climate Change Trust Fund, we got funding uh, and the work is going so that wildlife habitat, uh, fresh water uh, for the wildlife, will be improved and their population, I think, will be improved. So that is the all from my side. If you want to know anything, uh, please don't hesitate to ask me. Thank you very much for giving the opportunity. So from this uh, discussion, we found that uh, there, are, there are some uh, key findings from these discussions. Like, number one, uh, it, it, it has been found that uh, we all have been uh, uh, agreed that uh, this Shundarvan forest is very rich in biodiversity, OK? And uh, tiger population uh, is uh, variable, but uh, uh, finally it has been mentioned that the number is in, in uh, number is uh, 114, but it should be 164. But what should be done is that this number at least should be maintained. Okay. So number two is uh, uh, the vegetation of Shindobon uh, is changing. Some species, species number is increasing. At the same time, some are being decreased. So I think this is related to the uh, overall vegetation, uh, nature of the vegetation, because this mangrove is actually uh, is not a mature uh, ecosystem. It is just an, uh, in transitional. So that should be uh, changed, I think. And number three is, uh, uh, it has been mentioned that Shundarbans have not lost any land area, particularly in Bangladesh. So that is a good sign. Number four is, there is lack of uh, a good governance in, in terms of implementation of the conservation programs. Number five is, uh, government has taken uh, so many programs, although there are some limitations. Uh, but uh, it has been mentioned that uh, this conservation or regeneration uh, program model is completely different from the other, other countries because the situation is completely different here. And uh, so many innovative uh, programs also have been taken here. Uh, so uh, by doing these activities, it can be hoped that uh, in future, the situation will be better. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you once again, and we shall definitely be connected to work together in the Eastern Himalayas and for the Eastern Himalayas. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Bye. <laughs>